everyone. It is so good to see your faces. <laughs> Even though I can only see the upper half of your face, but I know I can tell who you are, and it's good to see you. I just, uh, Al asked me this morning if I would give the announcements, and really the big one is just that uh, we need to remember to listen to the word from Pastor Al. He's been faithfully doing it five days a week, and it has been a blessing to our household. We, uh, after we eat our meal, we bring out Pastor Al for dessert. And uh, we listen to his encouraging words, and we're blessed by it. And it is just good to see his face. It's just a little bit of fellowship. And uh, so I encourage you all to, to listen to it. He does it in the afternoons. and. It's not always exactly the same time, I don't think, but um, we, we listen to it after dinner every night. Um, I also wanted to give you a little bit of encouragement. I've been uh, reading and cross-referencing a lot in Hebrews as I've been studying the Old Testament. And it, um, there's a verse in Hebrews uh, chapter 2, verse 14 that I've always really loved. It says, Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives have, were held in slavery by their fear of death. And I was just thinking about the headlines we've been hearing lately. Between the coronavirus, rioting in the street, a lot of rioting in the streets, I think it was like 36 cities that were involved last night. Plus, we hear these stories about China, and, uh, and all those things can be pretty scary. But it says here that he destroyed the power of death. That's the devil. And freed us from our fear and our slavery to death. So we don't have to be afraid. No matter what's going on in the world, we don't have to be afraid. And then, uh, and the, the answer to that, when you do feel afraid, is um, chapter 3 of Hebrews, verse 1. It says, Therefore, holy brothers who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus. And that's, that's what we need to do to, to get away from that fear, to not get consumed by it. We need to put our eyes on Jesus. And uh, in verse 6 it says, And we are his house if we hold on to our courage and the hope of which we boast. We Christians boast about having faith and hope and courage. We need to hold on to that. And then there's one more thing uh, we've been reading in the Old Testament where it says, uh, talks about Moses going through the wilderness and he gets right up to the gate or to the, right up to the edge of the promised land. And God sends them back because of their sin. They weren't ready. They didn't believe. They sent out the spies and they came back and they scared everybody and they didn't have faith. So they, they huddled back together and they went back to uh, wandering in the wilderness. And it says in uh, chapter 4, it says, I love this. It says, therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands... The promise still stands for us. Let us be careful that none of you are found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the gospel preached to us, just as they did. They heard the gospel, that they could have the rest of God in the promised land, but they got afraid. But the message was of no value to them, because those who heard it did not combine it with faith. And so we need to combine everything we do with faith, whether it be, sure, we're going to put, we're going to put on masks and we're going to use hand sanitizer and all those things because it's smart. But do we do it with faith or we do it with fear? And uh, we need to do it by faith. And uh, I just like to pray before we start and um, ask God to bless us. Holy Father. We thank you that you conquered death. We thank you that we are no longer slaves to death, that we don't have to fear. 
We pray that you would help us to keep our eyes on you at all times, and especially, Lord, that we could do it by faith, trusting you, knowing that you are the one who can save us. We pray that you would use Andy's message this morning to encourage us all and uh, just pray that you keep everyone safe this week. In your name, amen.
Um, so blessed to be able to do that. I wanted to pray before I get started. I need all the prayer I can get. Father, I thank you so much for who you are. Thank you. You are God that is in control. A God that can fill us with your spirit. A loving God. A God that wants to do us good. I was just singing that song. It was just full of grace. Full of words that say, you want to bless us. And I believe that, God. Pray that you would bless this morning. Bless my speech. I pray that I wouldn't say what you don't want me to say. I, I would say what you do want me to say. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, good, acceptable, and perfect. God's will is good, acceptable, and perfect. I touched on that a little bit last week. That's the title of my sermon. I wanted to review a little bit. A couple weeks ago, I preached as from Revelation 22 and verse 12. Look, I'm coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. Wow. Look. Be looking. Uh, Cheryl was just sharing with me about things about the rapture. When the rapture comes, you're going to hear a shout. And then... It'll be like a trumpet. It'll be like the voice of an archangel. It'll be so cool, none of us will be expecting it. it will, we'll just be caught up. It'll be great. But he says, look, I'm coming back. And my reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what he has done. Look. We need to be doing. God created us for good works. Let's be doing the good works. We'll shine if we do that. Now, Romans 6, if, uh, for if we have been united with him in his death, in a death like his, we certainly shall be united with him in, the, in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of our sin might be brought to nothing so that we will no longer be enslaved to sin for the one who has died has been set free from sin we are united with Jesus we're united with him in his death we're dead God looked at us as man and he said you know there's nothing there that I can use My son will die in their place, and they will die with him. But we're united with him in his resurrection. When he came out of the grave, all of us that are believers were resurrected with him. Now we live a new life. We have, we have been born again. God said, this is grace. Man, look at that mess. There's, has anyone done good? The Bible says, no, not one. What about their righteous deeds? Oh, no, they're like filthy rags. So we die with Christ, and we're resurrected with Christ, and we're united in that. That is so, so good. I'm so excited about that. There's, there's grace there. Then it says that we are no longer enslaved to sin. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I told you last week in my testimony how I tried to be religious, and I wasn't good at it. The more religious I got, the worse I got. You know, the Bible says, and we're going to read a verse uh, in a little while, it says that when the law came forth, Sin just got worse. It was a reflection. I, the more I tried to do good, 
the guiltier I, the more guilt that was on me, I felt guilty. I just couldn't do it. I just, God's law was, I can't do that. I want to do that. I can't do that. So, I came to Christ and he said, okay, you can be united with me. You will be dead with me. But you will rise with me. And then now, I am not enslaved to sin. I, slave is not my master anymore. I could never say that before. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. I appeal. couldn't do any good. There was nothing good in us. And so now he says, okay, because you are living, you can become a living sacrifice. And we usually think of, you know, sacrifice, okay, I'm going to have to die. Well, you know, uh, God said, there was a point where God said, I am so tired of all these sacrifices, of this dead sacrifices. He had to send his son so that we could become living sacrifices. And what does a living sacrifice look like? I, I, I think, oh, you know, and I might, you might be thinking, oh, oh no, a living sacrifice. I've, I've heard uh, different people say the problem with a living sacrifice is they always want to get off the altar. But I, I want to encourage you this is Galatians uh, chapter 5 and verse 22. It's the fruit of the Spirit. That's, this is what a living sacrifice looks like. It's, it's love and joy. When you're living as a living sacrifice, you know what is, shows up? Love, joy, peace, patience. Those are all things that we, as a living sacrifice, can bring to God that we could not bring to God unless we are willing to say, God, here is my life. And then when you do that, the Holy Spirit comes in and gives you life, and gives you the fruit, His fruit. And it's uh, kindness. I try to be kind before I... I am kind now. I can have the freedom to be kind. I can be kind to little animals, to my children, to my wife, to other people, to people I don't like much. I can be kind to them. Goodness. And there's no goodness in me before, but now as a living sacrifice, I become, I have goodness. There's good things. Do you see good things sometimes in me? It is the Holy Spirit, as I become a living sacrifice, I get on that altar and say, here's my life. These things come out of it. Uh, faithfulness. Man, are you faithful? Well, if you just, I am a faithful man. You can be a faithful man or woman if you're a living sacrifice. And then gentleness and self-control. We, it's not in us, it's not like humans to be gentle. We're like our father, the devil. And that is, a, you know, you might be offended by that. But it's true. Before you become a Christian, your father is the devil. That's what Jesus said. Don't get mad at me. But when we come to know him, Hallelujah, we are no longer enslaved to sin. Um, so where do we start with this?
The first place to start is you've got to change your thinking. You've got to change. Uh, uh, I'm just a sinner saved by grace I don't know there's nothing good in me but God was so gracious to save me those, those are true statements but the way I see me is I can be full of the spirit God loves me God wants to do good to me. That's my, this is my message. God wants to be good to you. God wants to do good to you. Not only does God want to do good to you and for you, he has the power to do it. Oh, I've tried, I've tried. There are just some of those people I just can't love. I just can't be patient with those people. Those, there's those hypocrites. I just can't stand it. And I am, I'm in good company with those hypocrites. Jesus didn't like hypocrites either. How could I love them? But you know what happens? You receive Christ. You become united with him in his death. Then you become united with him in his resurrection. Then you are freed from the power of sin. And so now, God has the power. Grace means God has the power and he is willing to do good to you and good through you. God is good and he does good in me. How do I see myself? I see myself as an instrument of God. God can do all kinds of things through me. He can fill me with his spirit. If I'm filled, controlled by the spirit, I have the fruit of the spirit. So that's what happens. That's what grace is. The songs that we were singing about grace God's willingness and God's power to do you good. If you don't get anything out of this sermon, get this. God wants to do good and he has the power to do good in you. And I could just walk off and that would be, if you got that, that would be enough. But I'm not. I want to read some verses. Uh, one of the things that our pastor does so well is he documents everything he says with lots of verses. So there's no arguing with that. You might think, you know, you're looking at yourself and say, oh, yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah. Maybe that's good for him. I've tried that. It hasn't worked. Uh, but let me read a verse. Isaiah 30 and verse 18. This is how we need to change our thinking. Change the way you think about how God looks at you. Uh, I, sometimes we act and we pray uh, like this. We pray, oh God, oh, I, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. I'm no good. I'm no good. I'm no good. And I know you... you you know, you're obliged to serve, to do good for me because I accept, I said the prayer and, and now I'm one of your kids and you have to do, I, I'm sorry God, but I have to come to you and ask you for help. I know you don't, you know, I don't deserve it and, and, it's, and it would be okay if you said no because I'm not very good. We pray, we think like that sometimes. We pray like that sometimes. But here's, look at this verse. Therefore the Lord longs to be gracious to you. And therefore he waits on high to have compassion on you. He longs to be good to you. When you ask him for stuff, oh, 
I was waiting for you to ask me that. I was longing to do good to you. But I was waiting. Because I wanted to know if you trusted me. The, the context of these verses, Israel, they're messing up again, just like us. And they're rebellious. And God's up there and he's waiting for them to trust him. I am waiting. I long to have compassion on you. That's how we, do you see yourself like that? God longs. Do you see God like that? Do you trust God? Ah, God, you long to be gracious to me. Um, you, it's really hard to believe that God works all things together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Romans 8.28. That's one of our, that's a probably uh, the favorite verse of most Christians. But it's hard to believe that. If you don't believe that he's longing to do good to you. Wait, God, you work all things together for good. Oh, man. This virus came through. How's that good for me? God will work it out for good. Bad things happen to good people, and then God turns that bad into good. He uses that bad to bless you. He longs to do good to you. Um, here's another great verse. Romans chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. These are so familiar verses. But for one will scarcely die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person one would even dare to die. But God shows his love or proves his love, one translation says, for us. And while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. I was thinking about that verse Scarcely for a righteous man will someone die. He's a really good person. He's a righteous man. And I, I have to give my life up for him. But then a good person is one that's been good to you and you love them and you think, oh man, I would gladly a good person. I would, perhaps I'd die for him. You know, the, the righteous person, oh well, you know, trust him to God. If he dies, he dies. Hope, you know, but here's God's proof of his love. When did he die for you? When you were still a sinner. He proves his love. You didn't do anything to get into heaven. You didn't do anything to get into God's good graces. I was not looking for God. Some of you have been searching for God. I was not searching for God. God came after me, and he sent this believer to me, and he just kept talking to me and talking to me, and I didn't want to hear him. I did not want to be interested in what he had to say. Then, But God sent him to me, and then I thought, God, my life is a mess. I need you. I can't do anything with it. Then he proved his love for me. I was still a sinner and he died for me. He died for me 2,000 years ago because he knew that I would come to him. Then, this is another wonderful, but can you see how God is? Can you, do you have a picture of God? Here's another picture, a wonderful picture of God. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. This is Jesus. He's going to be crucified. The, the people are angry. There's some people that really love him and are excited about him. But there's others that um, they want to crucify him. And he knows he's going to the cross. And he's standing before over Jerusalem. And, and he says... Oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem. And he just, 
I, his heart is breaking. The city that kills the prophets and stones those that, who were sent to it. How often I would gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings and you are not willing. Sometimes we're not willing. Are you willing? But he wants, that's how God is. He's not up there just angry, ready to stone you, ready to discard you and then, and whatever. He's longing to be gracious to you. Then, um, this ver chapter 5 of Romans, verse 20 and 21. Now the law came to increase trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. How bad is your sin? Is your sin worse than God's grace? Uh, so bad that God's grace can't cover it? This verse says that no matter how bad your sin was, His grace covers it. You were covered. Then it says, so that as sin reigned in death, so grace also might reign through the righteousness leading to eternal life to Jesus Christ our Lord. One of the freeing things to me is um, to say, I can't. I don't know. Uh, before I was a Christian, um, I lied a lot. And then uh, when I became a Christian and I could say, um, I don't know, instead of making up a lie or saying, Yes, I was really wrong. I repent of that. I am sorry. Man, I was like, I was free. The law showed me how bad I was, and then grace gave me a way to get out of that mess, out of that thinking. I can't do it. Christ had to do it for me. I can't do it in my own power. I need the Holy Spirit to do it. And then I need my mind renewed. I need to think of myself rightly. How do you think of yourself? How do you think of God? How do you think God looks at you? Verse Ro, uh, Romans chapter 3 verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's what we've earned. We've, we've fallen short of the glory of God. And are just um, for all have sinned and are, fall short of the glory of God. And verse 24 says, And they are justified by grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. It's a gift in Christ Jesus, but redemption had to happen. Redemption means to buy something back. Redemption means God had to pay the price. He had to buy me. Now, I'm not a slave not a slave to sin. I am a slave to Christ. And then, whom God, uh, in, who is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation in his blood. He paid. The propitiation means a payment. You were redeemed at a high price. You are very expensive. He bought you with his blood. That's how much God loves you. He looked at you and he said, Oh, I will pay for that. I will pay for that man. I will pay for that woman. I love that man. I love that woman. I want them to be in heaven with me. And then while they're on earth, 
I want them to be free from sin. These are, that's what these verses say. Do you believe that? If you believe that, you'll live differently. This is who you are. What you believe will make a difference in how you act. What you believe will make a difference in how you act. It will make a difference in how you pray. It will make a difference how you look at other people. And then Romans 6. Change the way you think. Romans 6, 11. So you must not, so you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Do you see yourself? I am alive in Christ Jesus. I'm dead to sin. I don't need to sin. I only sin because I choose to sin. I used to say all the time, for as a Christian, I couldn't help it. It was just too easy. I just couldn't help it. I just fell into this thing. I just couldn't help it. I had to lie my way out of it. I just couldn't do it. It was just too easy to sin. Now, you know what I say? I do not have to sin. I only sin because I choose to sin. Each one of us, you, God has taken away the excuse. God has said in his word that every time you're tempted, he provides a way to escape so that you can endure it. So now I look for an ex way to, oh, I don't have to do that. I can just tell the truth. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't do it right. And uh, people will appreciate that. I, I have a business of my own. And sometimes uh, I'm late in, in doing stuff. You know what? If I call them first and say, hey, I'm not going to get it done on time, they really appreciate it. But if they have to call me, they don't appreciate it so much. But now, by God's grace, I can say, hey, you know what? I'm having a hard time here. I'm not getting it done or it didn't, you know, whatever. I confess my sin, and that's how it works in my business. How it, confess, how it works with one another is we confess our sins to one another. Say, brother, I am having a hard time with this. Then, as I keep looking at this, I keep thinking, God wants to do good to me. But we've got to change our thinking. Let me go back to that verse in Romans chapter 12. And the second part of that is so important. It says, uh, Romans 12 and verse 2, do not go, be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Change the way you think. How many times have I said that? I'll say it one more time. Change the way you think. That by testing you may discern what the will of God is. You know, testing or trusting, I look at them the same. There's different words. But for the way I apply it in my life, I've got to trust them. How do I know God's will is good, acceptable, and perfect? Because I trusted God. I was a uh, there was a, a time and I was uh, preaching, uh, I was a pastor of a church and it was a, a bigger church than this and it was really good and, and some things were going on and then God, uh, I was trusting God to lead me through counsel. And I was, there were some difficulties that I was having and I had never, I, the church had grown a lot, and I had never been in a big church. All the churches I have, had always been in were little churches. Uh, uh, 10, 20, 15, uh, 40, uh, 4, 
my wife and I and my two kids. But there were little churches, and now we had a church of uh, over 100 people and uh, about 125. And so on a good Sunday, there might be 150. And I was talking to these brothers, and I said, man, I wish uh, I could learn. I wish I had another pastor in here that had been into this kind of stuff, or I wish I had been had some experience with another church bigger than this. And, and that's just, and I said, uh, I was trusting God. And, for, and I talked to these older brothers than me that had led me to the Lord, had brought me to the place where I was at. And I said, brothers, um, what do you think? What should I do? And uh, they said, well, brother, there is this one church. And uh, it is um, really, really big. It's, uh, it's one of those, it was a mega church. But, brother, there's about 25 preachers there, 25 men. And you could go up there and be around these men and kind of just, you know, pick their brain a little bit and be with them. And I, so I trusted God. I didn't want to go. I did. I shoot. I finally this church is moving, and but I had. And this is not always how God leads. It's just the way God led me. And I wanted to trust God. So I trusted God that I trusted God that God could lead me to these men. So I went in the Word. I got in the Word. I didn't want to just go on these guys' uh, recommendation. I just prayed and I fasted and I just went up to uh, the Manzanos and I took a, a jug of water with me and, and I just stayed out there till I had peace that God was leading me to go to this place, to a different city. And I trusted God. And I have seen, it was a very difficult time, but God made it good for me. And then he made it an acceptable time for me. And then it turns out it was perfect. It was God's perfect will for my life. But I trusted God. What are you trusting? If you trust God, can you trust God? You know, uh, thinking about Adam and Eve. Here they're in the garden. They got everything they need. They don't need anything else. They're, we're, they're doing good. Planting seeds and everything comes up good. There's no weeds. Uh, they're just there and uh, Jesus tells them to um, multiply. So they're probably multiplying. And but uh, <laughs> so they're there, and then all they got to do is God says, "Don't eat of this tree of good and evil." You'll know that it's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Trust me in this. This is all you got to do. Well, uh, some people say, "Well, that's not nice because." They didn't know good from evil. What did they? What is good? Good was to trust God. Evil was not to trust God. That's all they had to know. You, you trust God, that's good. You don't trust God, that's evil. You read through the whole, whole, all the Old Testament. They trusted God. God blessed them. You don't trust God, it doesn't go good. But see, now we're in, the new, we're in the New Testament period. See, in the, those poor guys in the Old Testament, Spirit would come and go and they would mess up and it just be with us. God yearns. He longs to be good to you. But how do you know what's good? You've got to read God's Word. You've got to, if you, you have something, God, what should I do? God, how am I going to do this? God, can I trust? What if I get sick? What if I get the virus? Can I trust you, God? Will you work it out for good? 
or will I walk in fear? I was just thinking what Cheryl said earlier. Can we walk in faith or do we walk in fear? Oh no, what will happen? If our economy goes down, if our economy crashes, I sell luxury items. My business is going to crash. Can I trust God? Or will I walk in fear? All you need to do, all you need to understand, it's the same with us as it was with Adam and Eve. Trust God, it's good. Don't trust God, that's evil. They blew it, they didn't trust God. We blew it. We didn't trust God. We were just trusting in ourselves. We are trusting in our good works. I was being, going along, trying to be religious, being a hypocrite, not doing well. Then I came to Christ. I died with him. I res, resurrected with him. Baptism is such an important thing. It just shows all this. If you prayed last week, if you were, if you were doubtful whether you were a Christian or not, if you doubt whether you are a Christian or not, you need to ask Christ to come in your life and say to him, God, I'm not sure I'm a Christian. But I want to know for sure. Come in my life. Take over. I am yours. And then if you've done that and you haven't been baptized, if you've never, if you've never did that, and even if you were baptized, you need to get baptized again because baptism is for believers. Will you trust God? And so, uh, my life verse, we have, we have, um, our life verse for Cheryl and I, our family, is Psalm 67. And it basically, it says, that God is gracious to us and God blesses us to show his greatness. When God blesses me, it shows his grace. It shows his mercy. It shows his greatness. So God blesses us. So that the world, whole world can see this is what God does for a man that follows me. I'm going to pray now. If you haven't prayed to ask Christ in your life, you need to do that. I'm going to say a little a quick prayer. If this prayer reflects on you, on you, then you need to pray with me on that if you're not a believer. If you doubt you're a believer, if you have any question at all, I think I got saved six times before I finally got settled it. But if you're a believer now and you're not trusting God, then you need to trust God. Father, I thank you that you are gracious, that you long to be gracious to us. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for my sins before the ages, before I was born. Two, over 2,000 years ago, Jesus, you died for my sin. And you were drawing me to yourself that I might trust you. Jesus, I believe you. I will accept you as my master, as my Lord. Come into my life and take over. Lord, as a believer, I want you to take over my life. I can trust you. I will trust you. Lord, show me verses that I can count on. These verses that I've read today are enough. But there's plenty more. There's a whole Bible full of verses where we can trust you, Lord. In Jesus' name. I just want to say one last thing. We, Cheryl mentioned about uh, a word with Pastor Al. It's been really good. Uh, 
He's talked about real faith, about repentance, all the things that I've been talking about uh, has, has been very insightful and, and encouraging to walk by faith. So I would encourage you, just it's on, we go on to YouTube, we get it uh, sometime in the evening, and we uh, just are blessed. So I would uh, encourage you again to, uh, it's a, a word with Pastor Al, you just go to First Baptist, First Baptist Church, Bernalillo, and uh, you'll find it there. Thank you so much for being here this morning. It is good to see you. And the Lord bless you. Amen. Was it getting back feed from this other speaker? Was it getting, were you getting... Did it go? And did it work? Yeah. Hey, it is really good to see y'all. I ain't gonna put my mask so I can go down in the with the common folks. <laughs>